All right, I'm going to talk about this uh, dial bore gauge. This happens to be a Sunnen brand, um, the CK3280 uh, series. This dial bore gauge is, uh, can be used to measure um, for out of round and taper conditions in a cylinder. So first of all, I've got the gauge here itself. Um, it uh, reads in five ten thousandths of an inch and uh, it's used to, this is what I place down in the cylinder in order to measure the appropriate um, taper or diameter or out of round of a cylinder. When I have these different uh, connections right here, each of those um, are for different sized um, cylinders. And there's a chart in here that'll help you to identify which, which one of these that you need to use based on the uh, diameter of your cylinder. So you'll just need to look that up in service information. Okay, so in order to get this ready, I have this fixture right here. This is a, also a Sunnen fixture. Um, it's used to set the gauge um, up for measuring the uh, diameter um, for out of round or taper. All right, so let's talk about some of the components that are in the um, setting fixture. Uh, first of all, I have uh, this component right here. This component is, is used to um, set the diameter. Uh, this is the, the standard uh, gauge. Um, this particular one is the three inch um, standard. So this is just gonna slide right up in here um, and uh, be fixed in place. So my particular cylinder bore that I'm measuring uh, is 3.4446. Um, inches. That's uh, the, the minimum diameter of the cylinder. So I'm going to start with the three. I've got a three right here. So that gives me the three inches of the diam of the um, cylinder. I'm going to then go ahead and place uh, my uh, gauge here in the fixture. And I've looked at my chart and my chart indicates that I need the number six. Um, and I'm going to place that in here going to thread it in and I want to have it somewhere in the middle is probably going to be the the best uh, um, set and we're going to get this set at its uh, appropriate length here in a minute that's what this fixture is doing so I've got my three inches here and now we're going to work on this gauge on uh, this side right here all right so our, our main graduations on uh, this part of the um, barrel we start here with zero and then we have a one that one is a tenth of an inch, or 0.1. So if I were to dial this in, for instance, right here to the four, this would be three, because I have a three in my um, the, the standard gauge right here, and then uh, 0.4. So this is 3.4. All right, so uh, the next graduation that I'm concerned about, let me just thread this out a little bit, is uh, these intermediate graduations right here on the barrel. So each of these intermediate graduations are um, 0 .25, 0 0.025. So if I were to thread this back in on the zero, this would be four, uh, excuse me, 3.425, 3.425. Each one of these uh, graduations right here, they uh, represent one thousandth of an inch. So if I were to rotate this around and get it right on the line, that would represent 3.426. Because I have one thousandths added to that. So then I go to the two, that would be two seven, and so on. And then the smallest graduations, as it shows right here, is one ten thousandth of an inch. So if I were to rotate this slightly, then this would be three, three point four two seven one. Okay, because I'm on the, the graduation right there for um, the one. All right, so let's get this set up so that it, it matches our uh, particular circumstance. So I mentioned that we're looking for 3.4446. So I've already got the three, I've got the four. Let's get our other four. So that was two five plus 19 would give me 
uh, 4.4, so we have 3.444, and then I'm going to rotate this to the 6. So now we have 3.4, Point four, 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 six, and that's the diameter of my cylinder. So now I'm going to come back on this side and I'm going to make sure that my uh, dial bore gauge has some play in it so it can go both directions. I want to make sure to load it so it has a little bit. So I'm going to thread this out just a little bit and then I'm going to tighten down this locking screw. So once I have that tightened, that screw locked down, that means that in this setup with the dial bore gauge loaded on this side and fixed on this side I have a 3.4446 then I need to rotate I'm just going to rotate this around so we can see it the next thing that I'm concerned about is I want to zero out this gauge this gauge needs to be at zero here okay so I've zeroed out the gauge that means that at this particular spot where I'm pressing on the dial bore gauge, it gives me 3.4446. All right, so the purpose of uh, the measurements that we're about to take, we've just set up our dial bore gauge and now we want to determine whether or not we have a problem in this cylinder. The first thing that we're going to measure is we can see an example with this cup is we're looking for taper. It's possible that the cylinder is larger at the top or the bottom. It also could be the reverse. The cylinder is uh, larger at the bottom than the top. But we need to be able to determine that. That measurement is known as the taper of the cylinder. So we're looking for a taper measurement. I can make that measurement by determining what the diameter here is at the bottom of the cylinder and what the diameter is compared to at the top of the cylinder. So I've got my dial bore gauge um, that I can make that measurement uh, uh, on the dial bore gauge. So I'm going to slide this down inside the cylinder and I'm going to begin to rock it back and forth. So I'm pretty close to bottom dead center. I'm just above bottom dead center and I'm going to look to my gauge. So I'm going to see my needle and it's going to go in this direction and in this direction as I rock it back and forth. So here we're going to the uh, counterclockwise and there we're going clockwise. All right. At the point that it goes to the farthest clockwise, so right there, and then we see that we go in the opposite direction. So I'm leaning it forward in this circumstance. Now I lean it back and I have it go clockwise and now it's going counterclockwise. So that point right there is the diameter of my um, cylinder. So we can see that it's slightly above the a measurement that I just set up um, on my setting uh, gauge, my setting fixture. So I'm slightly above. In this example each graduation is five ten thousandths of an inch. So I'm five ten thousandths of an inch plus uh, on the, di the, the diameter that I set this for. Okay, so then if I wanted to re read the taper, I need to come farther up the cylinder. So I'm going to come, come a lot closer to the top dead center of the cylinder. I'm going to maintain the same direction that I was measuring, and I'm going to do the rocking back and forth. So I rock it, and I see that it's going counterclockwise. There, goes clockwise. So clockwise stops and then moves in the opposite direction. So right there is the diameter. So I'm exactly the same. So even though I'm on the plus, I'm plus five ten thousandths of an inch from bottom dead center to top dead center, I've identified that there is a uh, no taper in this cylinder. So there'll be a specification for taper for the cylinder. This particular um, cylinder is uh, there's no difference in taper. I can have some taper, you just have to look at your engine specific to, to be able to determine that. The next thing that we're concerned about in the cylinder is an out of round condition. So I've got my cup here again to demonstrate out of round. If this cylinder were perfectly round, that would mean that the diameter across the cylinder would be the same perpendicular as it is uh, across here. So this measurement would be the exact same. So these diameters would match. If I had an out of round condition, it would be something, and this is extreme, 
where the diameter in one direction is significantly smaller than the diameter in the opposite direction. So in order to do that, I'm going to do the same, same thing with my dial bore gauge. I'm going to place it, and I want to measure this approximately three different places. And I'm going to measure it, uh, once again, finding the exact diameter by going to where it goes to the most clockwise. So that's plus five thousandths. And then at that very height, I'm then going to rotate the cylinder, uh, or rotate the dial bore gauge, and make the same measurement. And when I make that same measurement on this particular cylinder, um, it's exactly the same. I wanted to show you this dial bore gauge, uh, the fitting down here, so that you can see how this uh, works. Um, this is a, a fixed end, so this is not moving. I can push on this and there's no movement. I've fixed it in by this lock nut. What is moving is, as I, I press on this part of it, this is just riding on the cylinder wall. Notice that nothing happens up here on my gauge. So I'm pressing on that, nothing's happening on my gauge. Okay, the thing that is actually making the change to the dial indicator is down here. So if I press on this part right here, so this is what's changing the dial indicator. Okay, so this is the part that's riding up against the cylinder wall. I'm riding up against the cylinder wall here, and this is the part that's changing my gauge. Okay.